Hello everyone, welcome back to the Europa Universalis 4 AI only campaign in the present day and there was something else to that, I don't even know but anyway, when we left off I have no idea what we were doing I'm sorry, Egypt was attacking Iran from their base in Muscat though and basically this area is pretty chaotic at the moment now we'll actually try and get to the current wars. We have, oh yes, the massive wars in Africa. How could I have forgotten that? Well, very easily. I haven't played this campaign for quite some time. So, I do apologize for that. Anyway, it looks like we got a major southwest, not southwest Africa, um, western African war going on along with the southern African war here now obviously this side on South Africa's side is going to win mainly due to development unless they can bring it unless um, somehow the AI stuffs up but it would not appear to be so we have the Chinese Malayan now we had a look at this earlier but we'll have a look again and this area is in turmoil at the moment but anyway so <laughs> The Malayan Peninsula, uh, Sumatra, and the middle of Borneo has been has succumbed to Chinese occupation. I don't know why the middle of Borneo and not any other regions around it, but whatever. Uh, the AI does what it wants. So, it may be a chance for the Philippines here to actually go back and attack Malaya here. Now, I probably should have gone in offline mode on Steam. I always forget that. I do apologize. Well then, we have Papua doing nothing. I was surprised that the Malayans didn't actually take over Papua. But, you never know. We may see the Australians do something. They're just chilling, as we do, in the middle of our own continent. That's the way we roll, we do. I'm sorry, I'm Australian, if you, if you didn't know that. Um, so the actual, actually, um, Java hasn't been sieged down at all, which is really good for Mal Malaysia, but I don't know why it's lagging so much. Probably because China's moving around like 700,000 troops. Unfortunately, that's a lot of troops. How many troops do they have? Let's have a look. Real quick look here. China. I can't... 1.2 million troops. Casual, casual 1.2 million. Jeez. Oh, hello. We have the Jordanian, Bahrainian nationalist star. <laughs> bah, Bahrainian. Sorry. Um, we have the Ghanaian, Togolese nationalist war. Jeez, okay. Well, it looks like Ghana's gonna win that one. So we got, we got a lot of chaos going on here. Righto. So Togo is getting sieged down by... not Benin. That's the wrong war. It's Togo and Niger versus Ghana and Mali. Probably gonna go for the Mali side, even though they're not the leader. But Ghana's gonna pick up Togo. Which is poor, but... Nigeria here. So, of course, you already know the major power players in Africa if you've been watching this campaign for long enough, which is Nigeria, Egypt, South Africa, and Algeria. And they each hold their own respective areas, their regional powers, essentially. But of course, you have probably the most powerful nations here is either Kenya or Ethiopia, whereas Mali is a competitor to Nigeria, but nowhere near the same amount of power. Uh, the Saudis here are pretty powerful. Um, of course, they are, they don't care about their southern neighbours. Right now, they are mainly focused on other things. Like India and Iran, which is really weird. It looks like a war ended over here. Um, I don't know what it was, but <laughs> it's being a bit of an issue. A war did end, but I, I didn't catch it. Um, I saw India's name move though. So the Polish conquest of Spitz, Poland, Lithuania, and Turkey versus Slovakia, Austria, Romania, and Croatia. Well then, 
that's um pretty decent war, may I say. Ah, uh, ooh. Probably the Turkish and Polish side, as you could probably already tell, is gonna pull it out pull out the big guns here and actually do well. Very, very interesting, Europe, because it's not actually moving anywhere any um, in any relative speed. It's just kind of sitting where it is. So Chad, Chad is massive. Like, its name's bigger than Algeria, but as we know, we have our good friend Russia. And why do I have such a affinity towards Russia in this campaign? Well, I do boot up as them every game and go into observe mode just to start off, because you can't actually boot without, um, you can't actually boot into observer mode in single player. But like Russia, except Chad <laughs> is even poorer. So maybe we'll see some good gameplay from Chad, maybe we won't. There's a lot of chaos going on in Africa right now. They all sort themselves out though. Now, oh, that war was as over as soon as it started. So Spitz went. I think that was it. That was probably it. I don't know why I'm lagging so much, and I do apologize for it. French-Dutch imperialist war, okay. So we got the Netherlands and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Oh, and that South African war ended. Uh, I don't see major border changes here. The Okavango Delta went to Botswana. That's, that's about it, I think. It's the Okavango not gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That is about it. Wow. That was a big war for no reason, though. That does secure the Okavango from uh, any major issues. Anyway. Oi! This war ended. Ghana took over Togo. And I don't know what else happened here. Oh, no. That war's not ended yet. So you still have Senegal, Guinea-Bissau, Sierra Leone, I and Ivory Coast against Burkina Faso, Niger, and Nigeria. And that's the Burkinabe Ivorian Nationalist War. Jeez. Okay, so this one's going to go on for quite a while, I feel. Chinese Malayan still going strong. French-Dutch Imperialist War. Well, the Dutch aren't in Europe, so... They're probably going for a colony type thing. Yep, they're St. Martin. I think that's the only Dutch settlement left. Even perhaps. I think it is. <laughs> Which is not the best, unfortunately. So, who is US allied to? Canada, Grenada, and St. Kitts and Nevis. And Canada's allied with the US. Righto. Well... The major issue is for Canada here is if they don't develop their upper provinces and if America ever goes into a hostile state, they're going to have some issues. Some major issues. Because <laughs> all their riches are in the south. I mean, they are on good terms, but who knows? In a hundred years, it may change. Ireland's still going strong. Oh, I'm sad, though. It doesn't have Northern Ireland. One day, one day you will hire ones. Anyway, Polish Belarusian. Okay then, well, Poland and Germany, that's a twist. That's a twist and a half right there. Poland and Germany versus Belarus, Hungary, Estonia, Ukraine, Czech Republic, no, yeah, Czech Republic and Russia. Yes, I got it right. Oh my goodness, that is going to be a chaotic war. And I think the Poles are the attacker. I didn't actually read that. Yes, they are. Why are the Poles attacking? You're attacking the Eastern Bloc, essentially. That's that's some major previous states right there. Okay, so Ukraine left. Um, That was quick. So what, how's the troop movement going? Russia's coming in. But Germany, I think, has more troops than Russia. Russia isn't a major world power, as they look there. 
Ah, bit of a glass cannon, as it were. Oh, Hungary joined on the side of um, Belarus. Righto. So, uh. Don't grab this, anyone, because that's some major irradiated regions right there. Uh, because of a little something called Chernobyl. Uh, I think it's in the Chernigov region. But anyway, Chernobyl. The Chernobyl disaster of, I do believe it was 1987. You could go look that up if you wanted to. But 1987, I'm pretty sure, if my history serves me. That was a nuclear reactor that blew up and irradiated most of, well, a part of northern Ukraine and almost all of southern Belarus. It wasn't too great. Anyway, I digress. Let's have a look. Second Spanish Algerian imperialist war. Scramble for Africa all over again. So we have Spain, Brazil, Portugal. Huh. Romance languages from the Iberian Peninsula, right there. Versus Algeria, France, Egypt, and Slovenia. Oh, Slovenia is not going to help much. I mean, look at them. They are pretty rich, though. I'll give them that. But the French and the Spanish will be fighting for quite a while. Whereas Algeria will siege Oran, Suta. No, that's Suta and Melilla. Oh, this is going to be quite interesting indeed. Who will win? Probably not Spain. Spoilers. Anyway, there was another war. Now there's another war, okay. Excuse me. Um, Slovakian conquest of Zloven. Z Zloven? I'm just going to leave it like that. So Slovakia and Austria against the Czech Republic, Hungary. Luxembourg, Ukraine, Switzerland, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Belarus. <laughs> Jeez. Okay then. Well, there's a lot of chaos going on in Eastern Europe at the moment. Oh. <laughs> oh dear, indeed. Okay, so that's the that's the only parties involved currently in two separate wars. Yeah. Okay. So if we click on Hungary. That's the only parties involved currently in two different wars. Hungar Hungary's fighting, fighting both sides. That's uh, quite interesting. Well then. If Bosnia and Herzegovina can get military access through either Serbia or Croatia, they could help out. But of course, you have Germany on one side and Russia on the other. So, really, this is just fighting over the chaotic region here. If Russia could connect Kaliningrad, that would be alright, because it would consolidate their claim on the region. Because, if you do not know history, Kaliningrad itself, the, the two provinces here, Koenigsberg and Westruck, plus a bit extra of Poland, in the northern part, was Prussia. Yes, that's right, it was Eastern Prussia. Now... That's a remnant of World War II, and I have no idea why Russia still owns it, but they own it. And that's one of their major access points to the Baltic Sea, so it's quite strategic to them. Even if they have to fly planes over there to get there. But, you know, what are you going to do? Well, you could say Russia get out, but Russia won't do that. And, uh, as I sound rather biased toward against Russia right now, I'll give you some more information. I do believe that the thing in Syria that is happening at the moment, if you do not know about that, that it, Russia is bombing both sides, like both rebel groups, well, various, all, all rebel groups they're bombing, essentially, instead of America's um, pick and choose which rebel groups they're bombing, which is mainly they're bombing ISIS. Um, yeah, I support Putin's claims on that, and that may make me sound like a commie, but what are you going to do? He's actually right for once. And yes, for once. I don't agree with most of the things Mr. Putin does, but some some things you got to sit back and see and see that what it's for instead of listening to western propaganda or eastern propaganda for that matter. The bare facts are good enough.
So uh, the Melikati region, or the nagorno Kavabak region, or part of it at least, is Republic. It's it's weird. It's it's basically it was a rebel group that wanted to join Armenia, and they're still there. And Azerbaijan won't give them independence or actually anything. So yeah, it's it's a bit weird here at the moment, in real life, not in 2039, which is what we should care about. We have the second British-Cuban imperialist war, that is Britain trying to expand its claim on the West Indies. Kenya and Yemeni, well that's going to be a pushover for Kenya. Malagasy Camoran, uh, nationalist war. And we have the chaos that is Eastern Europe. Righto, this is going to be a relatively even war. I really wish Madagascar would actually develop their provinces, but it's kind of... It's semi-accurate to the current state of the world, is that progression isn't exactly wanted in some regions. I know that sounds weird, but uh, a certain country, which we don't actually have on the map, um, but Eritrea... I won't talk about them, you can look them up. They're said to be worse than North Korea. That's literally how bad their government is. But anyway, this chaos here is going to be basically a deciding factor of who's stronger, Germany or Russia. And Hungary is actually... F oh, he's out of it. Okay, well, that was good for Hungary. So I think there's only one war occurring now. Yes, there is. No, there's still two. Okay, but this war's on a much lower scale. And Ukraine and Bosnia and Herzegovina are actually involved in this war against Slovakia and Austria. So, that was the Slovakian conquest of Zlovin, which was their old region. Huh. Wait, that was glitchy. Hate mods. No, I don't. I'm joking. I'm sorry, mod creators. I didn't mean it. Oh, those chaos stacks there. They are wasting so much manpower there. Each tick they get is just massive. Minsk actually fell relatively quickly, but Russia's patrolling the region. And, oh, well, we may see uh, bigger Poland going into Belarus. And there we go, people. There we go, we have Grodno and Brest ceded to Poland, and that looks to be about it. The chaos is over, almost. We still have the Slovakian co re re reconquest or conquest? It's a reconquest. Yep, yeah, reconquest. Well then, have fun Slovakia, hope you win back your land. And uh, they're probably going to take Morava or Moravia, depending who you ask. Luxembourg, uh, maybe not. We'll s oh, hello. Who pieced out there? Was that Ukraine? Yep, Ukraine pieced out. And now the thousands of Russians, or the tens of thousands of Russians, are going back past the Urals into Siberia because they can. Actually, not all of them, but I think they lost a major amount of troops in that war, and it really goes to show that. Germany is currently superior to Russia, even though they're, uh, Russia's still ahead in tech. That's really quite interesting to note. Also, this is chaotic. This uh, map mode. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, yep, every almost everyone's secular. And I, I feel this is kind of wrong that North Korea is secular because they can they're not allowed a religion it's the same oh it's not it's not the same but religion is discouraged in uh, China as well anyway I think we'll end the episode here thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed those little tidbits of uh, history and current world events and it looks like the conquest of Algeria is going quite smoothly for Spain and I'll see you all in the next video, and you know the drill. Goodbye.